Hi everybody, I'm Bill Whittle and welcome back to the Firewall. Well, election season is upon us again and so I thought I'd provide a handy voter's guide to the Republican Party to help make your decision just a little bit easier. Now obviously, the one thing that everyone knows about we Republicans is that we're evil. But evil is a little too generic. There's no way to really separate the evil Republicans from the evil corporations that pay pretty much everybody's paycheck or even the evil military that protects our freedoms and our right to be evil in the first place. So we have to be a little more specific and the best way to do that is to use a Venn diagram. Now the first thing that makes Republicans uniquely evil, at least according to the Democrats in the news media, and they're all Democrats, is that we're greedy. Second, obviously, we're all fascists and most importantly, of course, we're all racists. So just to clarify things for you before you vote, let's start with greedy. According to Democrats, we Republicans are greedy because we're in favor of low taxes and limited government. We think you should surrender as little of your freedom to the government as possible and you should be entitled to keep as much of your money as you possibly can. We think you're entitled to the rewards of your own work. We also think you know how to spend your own money better than the government who wants to take as much of it as possible. So, as you can clearly see, we Republicans who don't want your money are greedy, and the people that do want to take all of your money, the Democrats, are benign and generous. Just ask them. Secondly, we evil Republicans are all fascists. That's why students on college campuses never let us speak without throwing pies or chanting or screaming at us. According to those young Democrats, fascists are not allowed to speak and must be silenced by force in the name of freedom of expression. The word fascist, by the way, comes from the Latin word fascis, which means a bundle of sticks. It was used by a determined member of the Italian Socialist Party named Benito Mussolini as his metaphor for what he wanted for Italy. All of the individual sticks, which could be broken one by one, tied together into a huge socialist bundle which could not be broken. Fascists believe in political violence to achieve their ends. Hey, just like the Occupy Wall Street people. Fascists are totally opposed to free market capitalism. Hey, just like the Occupy Wall Street people. They hate religion too, by the way. Instead, fascists believe in a powerful state-regulated economy which can bring just buckets of hope and change to the people of Italy or America. And the only private businesses that they approve of are ones under the direct control of, or at least dependent on, the government. Like, oh, I don't know, General Motors, let's say, or Solyndra. But if we're not fascists, at least we Republicans are still Nazis, right? Well, as it turns out, the word Nazi is a German acronym meaning National Socialische Deutsche Apparatiparte, or NSDAP. Translated directly into English, Nazi means, no wait, hold on, that can't be right. It means National Socialist German Workers Party. Well, what do you know? Turns out, you can't spell Nazi without Socialist Workers Party. Isn't that interesting? No, we anti-socialist, free market, private property loving, pro-individuality Republicans are the opposite of both the big state government controlled bundle of sticks that Italian socialists called fascists and also the racial socialists called Nazis and even the international socialists called communists. You know, the guys in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Those socialists plus the Chinese socialists have killed about, oh I don't know, maybe 150 million people so far. I know it's all very confusing, but no doubt Michael Moore will clarify it all in his next $30 million movie about how bad capitalism is. And finally, of course, we Republicans are racist. Now to prove it, let's go back to history again. Our Republican Party was founded in 1854 by anti-slavery, well, I guess they, they must have been anti-slavery racists who departed the Whig Party and opposed the pro-slavery Democrats. The first presidential candidate for the Republicans was John C. Fremont, known as the Pathfinder. The Democrats went into full fear-mongering mode on this guy and said to the people, hey, if you elect a Republican, slavery is all but over. Well, Fremont lost, but in 1860, the second Republican candidate, Abraham Lincoln, did win. Between the date of his election and his inauguration on Monday, March 4, 1861, seven of the slave states in the Deep South had left the Union to form the Confederacy. Left it before he was even sworn in as president because they knew that the rise of us racist Republicans meant the end of slavery in America. And it did too. 
After the war ended, Lincoln was assassinated by Democratic activist John Wilkes Booth, and then the racist Republicans passed the 13th Amendment, abolishing slavery, the 14th, providing due process and equal protection under the law, and the 15th Amendment, providing voting rights to blacks. The non-racist Democrats fought all of these things tooth and nail, and when the first black men were elected to Congress as racists, sorry, as Republicans, the Democrats got to work and founded the Ku Klux Klan to make sure it wouldn't happen again for a century. Democrats wrote the odious Jim Crow laws that kept blacks in position of slavery. All of those pictures that you've seen in the 1960s of, of people turning fire hoses and dogs on peaceful black marchers were unleashed by Democrats like Lester Maddox, Bull Connor, and George Wallace. You know, the great anti-slavery writer Frederick Douglass, also a racist Republican, once wrote, I recognize the Republican Party as the sheet anchor of the colored man's political hopes and the ark of his safety. The ark of his safety. Now, of course, Democrats can't argue with this history, mostly because it's true, although that's not usually stopped them before. So, what they say to justify this century of shame is that right around the time that they themselves, modern Democrats, came along, the parties mysteriously switched sides. Now what really happened was that the loving, decent, progressive racism that's been a hallmark of the Democratic Party took a new and subtle form. They invented a new way to keep black people on the plantation, working for them like they used to. They gave them free food, free housing, and free medical care in exchange not for a harvest of cotton, but rather a steady annual bumper crop of votes. And the way that they did this was by telling black Americans that the Republicans that had fought and died for their freedom were in fact the real racists because we were against these new shackles like affirmative action and entitlement programs that keep them perpetually bound to their democratic masters. Well, it's true, we are against them. We're against affirmative action because we see people as individuals, not as a bunch of sticks good and bad individuals, and we don't see black people as being so inferior as to need lower test scores to get into college. We think they can do just as well or as poorly as anyone else. We so-called racist Republicans not only quote, but we actually believe the words of that great Republican who said that he had a dream that his four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We believe that there is a word for people who are used by other people and provided in return with free food, free housing, and free medical care, and that word is slaves. And the Republican Party was, is, and always will be the party that frees the slaves.